Hello everyone, I'm Alison Rowley, Digital Editor at Creative Head Magazine, and today I'm checking in with another one of our My Trend Vision Spotlight competitors, Zara McIntyre. Zara's going to be talking to me all about her prep for the final and just how she's found competing this year in what has been very strange circumstances. And Zara's also going to be joined by David, the owner of House of Colour. He's going to be talking about how Trend Vision impacts their business as a whole and what it means to have Zara reach the final once again. Let's catch up with them now. Zara, how has your preparation for this final stage been going? It's going brilliantly. So at the moment, we are putting our final touches. We shoot this Sunday, and we're really excited about it. So at the moment, I'm really just perfecting my presentation. And we've got makeup trials happening this week as well, and just fine-tuning my script so that I can really go and present my best look. What, what kind of support have you been giving there, David? Have you been there from the very start when Zara was like, I'm going to enter this year? Were you the one pushing yeah, her yeah, to yeah. enter? Yeah, well, I think there's a, there's a culture that's developed in House of Colour, which means that we try and make as many opportunities for the team as possible. Uh, bear in mind, we've won uh, the trend division, I think, five of the last eight years. Um, Zara has won a silver medal. Uh, the past two years, she's been running up in the craft artist category. And we have a set process that we do because what we want to do in the group is we want to make sure we give every potential superstar the opportunity and the platform to get themselves out there. Um, one better than Zara and the other three girls who are finalists as well. Um, so what we do is, once we register interest in the group, we then set forward on a boot camp. And the boot camp is there and designed to make sure that the boys are well prepared to enter the competition and they can go and enjoy the competition as opposed to stressing out. Obviously, there's periods of pressure, and obviously there's you know a certain pressure against going up your up against your peers and people like you respect in the industry. But we feel that if we um, I think the same is if you fail prepare, prepare to fail. And that's one of our sort of catch things. So we do spend a lot of time prepping and preparing for boot camp and getting ready for uh, the occasion. And it means then when the guys go, if, if they don't succeed or they don't win gold, you know, they feel that it's been a journey and they, they, they've learned a lot of it and they've got something out of it. Zara, in terms of what made you decide for the final look that you're going for um, as your, your final submission, what kind of influence that? It obviously has to differ significantly from um, the, the look that got you to the final. What helped make that decision for you, the way it's going to turn out? Well, what's amazing, um, David touched on this as well, within House of Colour, we actually do projects on the training. Um, so he has always kind of had me looking at pop culture. You know, I'm looking back and I'm looking at movies. So my inspiration for this, um, for this look this year is actually the movie in the 80s. And it's referenced into pop culture now and how it goes into the fashion industry, how Vogue has picked it up, how famous designers has picked it up. I don't want to give too much away. Um, but like but I wouldn't know about these things if I didn't work in a salon that encouraged me to go and to research these things because it's it's great. So I always have like a little a bank of references that I can go back to. And again, that's a huge a huge part of how to colour and how we're trained and how we prepare for competitions. Now, obviously you're in a colour category finalist. What lines and what particular products um, were the hero products in putting together your look? Obviously you haven't shot it yet, but I'm, I'm sure you've got a clear plan of exactly what formulas you're going to use and how everything's going to play out like that. Well, what's amazing about well is you can't go wrong with any of it, uh, any of it but for my competition this year, Colour Touch is my holy grail product. Um, so I've already gone in and I have um, worked through preparing um, little swatches and cocktail individual mixtures because I really wanted to create something that was going to be individual to my model. Um, and that's what's brilliant about Wella. And looking at their Instagram pages and seeing what mixtures they have, but definitely Colour Touch because they've got amazing range. You can literally, the world's your oyster when it comes to that colour product. The, the journey there, the road to the final has been slightly different than we all anticipated. Um, what kind of things did you find kind of stood out in these different and slightly difficult circumstances? And is there something that you kind of learned from uh, having to approach it in a different way? Well, what I think is amazing is how we've been able to adapt it so quickly. 
we've been able to move, like our industry has been able to completely restructure. And as you said, I've competed the past two years and it's really exciting me this year um, because it's a completely different format. It feels like a completely different competition. And I feel so inspired and really creative because I think I have a bit more control in that sense. And um, so I'm, I'm loving it. And like, I just said, um, like, I just feel that it's just going in a good direction. Do you know what I mean? I love that it's social media. I love the presentation. And I've noticed my presentation skills have improved greatly from the first round to this round. Because, you know, what other time would you find yourself standing in front of a camera? talking and re-filming and re-filming so it has taught me a lot about how my vocal toning and how I speak and it has made me a stronger presenter and as an educator and house of colour as well it's actually helped me in the work. Yeah I, do, I think it's interesting, I mean Zara's an absolute superstar obviously but I also think it's interesting that the industry as a whole during Covid we were the only industry that actually went online, started educating ourselves, started inspiring each other, started to look for the superstars to stand up. And that's where the likes of Zara stood up because across the industry, you know, the people who cared about the industry took part and took action and didn't just sit down for four months and do nothing. They worked with their teams, they worked on social media, they connected across the world. And I think that that says a lot about our industry as a whole. We're not prepared to stand still, we're not prepared to lie down, and we're always looking to take the next step. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously it was, it was a different um, approach to entry and the, the entire process as we just touched on. Did you find that staff returning after lockdown to the salon who'd been involved in the competition were sort of reinvigorated with this creative energy because they'd had an outlet for, through Transvision? Is that for Zara or me? <laughs> <laughs> For you, for you, David, but also I think Zara touched on it a bit as well, saying that she, she, she had the time. Yeah, yeah. To yeah I think that. the guys were big, right? I mean, we did, we did weekly meetings for, 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 for four months on Zoom. Uh, we have five salons in an academy. We employ 100 people. Uh, so we made sure we stayed in contact with everyone. We set up a, a, a training education hub. Uh, where we educated the assistants. We gave the assistants weekly projects that were set by the likes of Zara and the other trend region finalists, Joey and Emily and Ashton. And we made sure that everybody was kept in the loop constantly. I mean, just because you're not necessarily attending a place of work doesn't mean your passion dies or your enthusiasm dies or how you feel about your industry dies. And we felt it was our responsibility as senior people in the group to make sure that everybody came back to work and felt, right, it's time, it's time to move. I think it's a big hats off to Wella as well that during this period when everyone else seemed to be saying, well, we're not going to do a competition, or we're going to step back out, Wella actually powered forward. Because not only did the initial trend vision happen, they also did the exposure competition as yeah. well. And I think when you look at the leaders in the industry, you've got to say that Wella have really led the industry through COVID. They've been spectacular in what they've done. You know, really have now. And I, I think that it, it's 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 a sort of it's a sign of how exciting well it is as a family and as a group and how progressive they are that they took action. Mm -hmm. yeah, just amazing. You know, I was even talking yesterday after we were working with the Well of World Colour TV and we presented at that yesterday. And um, it's amazing when you look at, you know, the likes of Facebook, well, it's well, the Facebook page, their Instagram page. I feel like as a staff member coming back, I was more motivated to come back. I was more inspired because when else would you get the opportunity to, you know, essentially have a huge chunk of time off and educate yourself every single day? And it was, it was, ama it was amazing. And as the state said, you know, we were doing a lot of stuff behind the scenes. So we were constantly in contact as well. Do you see that it has an impact um, on individual staff columns and sort of client perception? I can see the award is sat there in front at the moment. I'm sure it has pride of place alongside others in the salon. Does it give you that sort of prestige lift being part of the competition year after year? Yeah, I think so. I, I think what it does for the individual is it stretches them. Um, they get to see what other people are doing in the industry. They get to test their skills. Uh, they, get to, they get to build their communication ability. 
they get to see themselves as artists. And I think for the individual, it really is a stepping stone in the career that they must take. Um, what that does for the team then is it sets people like Zara up as aspirational figures. So you've got a kid coming in at 18 who knows very little about the industry. Uh, her first person that she meets on her very first day, because Zara is also a teacher in her academy, is Zara McIntyre. So she gets to see the person who is a double silver medal winner at Transvision, a person who's a Wella Pachinese, a person who's a member of the Wella Soil Council, a person who educates at the Wella Academy uh, firsthand and gets an in-depth knowledge of the industry and what it takes to get to the top of the industry firsthand. So if you imagine you've got somebody who maybe would have talked to their career guidance advisor at school who told them that hairdressing is okay as a career and then the first person they meet the very first day in their new job is an absolute rock star and it sets the tone for their career also so i think the competitions are important because not only from an individual standpoint because of the sport it actually filters out with, with the people around you and sport as they want is there is there anything that you're kind of when you look back you go our tva 2020 was all about that well, what I think is, is amazing about TVA is I always take something away, win or lose, you can't not take something away from it because the mentoring program alone that you get, you know, we had a mentoring day the other day with James Earnshaw, Akin Kanizzi, and the Hobbit creation team. But when I always make sure that we're constantly learning, so I'm always learning something. But this year, I've found that I can kind of push myself out of my comfort zone a little bit, and I really am pushing myself because I've been able to take that time that I was away and um, and really try my my abilities and again work on colours, work on cocktailing, and um, something I wouldn't have always necessarily done, and been able to look and educate myself and really you know, perfect my, my skills as a hairdresser and perfect my skills as a pre presenter as well because, you know, House of Colour are part of our artistic team as well and we have a lot of things coming up and I feel now coming out of this, I'm more confident to stand on stage and to speak and to represent well as well in the future. Um, do you think that you'll be entering in 2021 when, fingers crossed, things may be a bit more back to the spectacle and uh, the coming together? 100% I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> if she wins this year, she's probably going to be judging next year. <laughs> oh, I love time <laughs> And one final thing from you, David, have you got a message for Zara as she enters into this final stage? Well, I, I, I think my message to Zara would have been uh, the message we gave her on the very first day she started and how's it for her? We believe Zara can make dreams come true, not only for herself, but also for the people around her. She's an inspirational character, win, lose, or draw on air roles. She's a fantastic communicator and an absolute top-notch hairdresser. And I think something that we stand by is that sometimes you meet people in life that talk to talk. Uh, but the one thing I do know is that Zara McIntyre can definitely walk the walk. And I think it takes a certain kind of individual to get a silver medal two years running and then bounce back and say, I'm going for gold again. And I think that sort of speaks volumes of the type of girl that Sari is. She's charismatic, she's passionate, she's enthusiastic, and she's probably one of the best hairdressers that I've ever seen. I've not seen a lot of this. I've been around the world. Um, and I think she's, she's well on her way to becoming an icon in the industry. We're very proud of her.